Look who's in the reject bin. It's the raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Made imperfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the raggy doll and say I just don't care. Cause raggy doll, raggy doll, are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. One morning, just after breakfast, the raggy dolls were passing the storeroom when they heard a little voice sobbing. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, what am I going to do? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The raggy dolls decided to investigate. There's no one here, thought Sad Sack. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, sobbed the little voice again. Hello, called Princess as softly as she could. Are you all right? For a long time there was no reply. Don't be shy, said Lucy kindly. Perhaps we can help you. Very slowly, a long, soft face appeared. It was a little cart horse. Hello, said Dotty with a smile. How do you do? The little cart horse looked sad. I don't know. What's the matter? asked Back to Front. The little cart horse sighed. I don't know. Sad Sack was confused. Don't you know anything? he asked. No, I don't even know what I am. You're one of Mr Grimes' soft toys, said Lucy. You're a little cart horse. And a very beautiful one too, added Princess. Who is Mr Grimes? Dotty explained all about Mr Grimes and his toy factory and how he was always making new soft toys for children to play with. The little cart horse looked puzzled. What does a toy cart horse do? The raggy dolls looked at each other. No one knew. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The little cart horse began sobbing again. What am I going to do? Don't cry, said Lucy. Perhaps all you've got to do is make some nice little boy or girl happy. How can I do that? I don't even know what a real cart horse is supposed to do. The raggy dolls felt very sorry for him, especially Sad Sack, who'd never met anyone quite as sad as himself. Suddenly, Lucy had a brainwave. I know. Would you like to meet a real cart horse? Oh, I'd love to said the little cart horse. Do you really think I could? I don't see why not. Farmer Brown's got a lovely old cart horse called Hercules. He's retired now, but I'm sure he'd be glad of some company. He'd b -b -b be thrilled, added Hi-Fi. I n -n 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 know he would. That's settled then, said Dotty. We'll all go and visit Hercules. The little cart horse was very excited to be out of doors. He was interested in everything. What is that? What's it doing? Th 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 that's a tractor, said Hi-Fi. It's p p p ploughing off a field. The little cart horse didn't stop asking questions until they reached the gate where Hercules stood. He was resting one leg and his eyes were closed. He seemed to be asleep. <coughs> Gosh, isn't he big? Oh, he's big all right, said Dotty. Trouble is, he's also a bit hard of hearing. So saying, Dotty quickly climbed up the gate and jumped onto the back of the big cart horse. The others watched as she slid along his neck until she reached one of his ears. Wake up, Hercules! You've got visitors! Uh, where? What dizzy birds? Visitors! yelled Dotty. Oh, no need to shout. I see them. They brought someone who wants to meet you, explained Lucy. Hello, 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 said Hercules. What brings you here? Out for a nice long walk, hmm? Formidable, muttered Claude. His earring has got worse. 
the little cart horse stepped forward. Hello. I was wondering if you could help me. Bless my buckles and brasses. What a handsome little fella. He wants to know what cart horses do, yelled Dotty. You know, chuckled back to front, straight from the horse's mouth. Oh, yes, the way from the north is south. But I expect you'd rather hear all about cart horses, huh? wouldn't you? The little cart horse nodded. Very well, said Hercules. Listen carefully. Look who's talking, thought Sansac. Years ago, before the motor car became as popular as it is today, cart horses did all the heavy work that men couldn't manage by themselves. Some of us pulled wagons loaded up with great beer barrels. Some of us used to walk for miles and miles along the towpath beside a canal, pulling long, narrow boats. But that's not how we started. Oh, no. Long, long ago, in the olden days, we went into battle. Those gallant knights wore such heavy armor, they had to be lifted onto us by a sort of crane. <laughs> we were the only kind of horse that could carry them. And, of course, there was working the land. That was the best work, especially harvest time. That was nowhere near as hard as plowing. Those plowmen used to take great pride in their work. And if one single furrow was crooked, they'd turn around and plow it again, straight. I had no idea Hercules knew so much about cart horses, said Lucy. Neither did I, thought said so. What noble creatures! You must feel jolly proud. But the little cart horse still looked sad. Not really. I'm so small, I couldn't do any of the things a real cart horse can do. Suddenly, Claude stopped. Attention! He pointed. A tractor was lying on its side in a ditch, its plow sticking up in the air. R -r -r raggy dolls to the r -r rescue! Stammered Hi Fi. The raggy dolls raced towards the stricken machine. Water was filling the cab, and the driver was trapped, unconscious. Imam emergency! Imam emergency! Hi Fi called into his headphones. Fire brigade needed at Brown's farm! Imam -im immediately! We can't wait for the fire brigade, said Dotty. If we don't get the driver out soon, he'll drown. There's a tow rope in the toolbox, called back to front. Maybe we could pull him out. It was a desperate idea. It's no use, wailed Lucy. Even if we all pulled together, we still wouldn't be strong enough. Where's the little cart horse? asked Sadsack. Here I am, he said breathlessly. I went to fetch Hercules. Good thinking! exclaimed Dotty. In no time at all, the rope was looped around the big cart horse's neck and attached to the tractor. Hercules heaved and heaved, and at last, the tractor was upright again. In the distance, they could hear the sound of the fire engine. We'd better be going, said Dotty. Well done, everybody, especially our little friend here. The little cart horse didn't know what to say. But Hercules did. <clears throat> Remember, lad, as long as men are men, a cart horse will always be useful, even a toy one. <laughs> he gave a wink and set off back to his field, majestically. Raggy dolls are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. It was early October, and the Raggy Dolls were busy picking blackberries. They were going to make jam. They picked only the blackest and the juiciest berries, leaving the rest to ripen for the birds and mice and other woodland creatures. But they had to be careful. There were lots of thorns. Oh, said Sad Sack, pricking himself yet again. Haven't we got enough yet? Let's see, said Dotty who was also feeling a bit tired and scratched. We've got quite a lot, said Princess. Mais oui, said Claude. But remember, when they are cooked, they will not seem so much, n'est-ce pas? Dotty sighed. Claude's right. 
Come on, chaps, just one more cupful each. Sadsack groaned. <sighs> if he hadn't been so fond of jam, he would have given up there and then. The ragged dolls set to work again, and soon they were emptying their cups into the cardboard box once more. <laughs> said a voice. You oh, have been busy, haven't you? The raggy dolls looked up. It was Woody, the wood pigeon, high up in a tree. He flew down to take a closer look. Oh. May I? And without waiting for an answer, he picked up a juicy blackberry and swallowed it. Very tasty, too. Hey, grumbled Sadsack. It took us ages to pick those. Yeah added back to front. And I still don't think there's enough. I didn't mean to be rude. Enough for what? Jam, said Lucy. If only we had something easier to pick. Woody looked thoughtful. Wood apples, do? He suggested. Why, yes, said Dotty eagerly. Blackberry and apple jam. Delicious. But where are we going to find apples? asked Princess. I'll show you. Follow me. Sadsack and Hi-Fi carried the big cardboard box while the others tried to keep up with Woody as he flew from tree to tree. Doesn't he know how heavy this is? I d -d 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 don't think he d -d 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 does. At last, Woody stopped to let everyone catch up. Through the trees, they could see a road. The car whizzed past, travelling at full speed. You all have to cross the road. I should have warned you. That's all right, said Dotty. We'll make sure we look both ways. We'd better leave the blackberries here. <laughs> With the cups on top, chuckled back to front. Some of Woody's friends might be feeling a bit peckish. Oh, I don't know what you mean, protested the bird. The ragged dolls crept up towards the roadside. They had to cross a muddy ditch, littered with polythene bags, old drinks cans, and empty snack packets. Ugh, said Dotty. Why are people so messy? I don't know, said Princess sadly. They spoil everything with their awful rubbish. Oh, they just don't think, said Woody. Come on. How will we get across all that mud? asked Lucy. No problem, said back to front. I'll make a bridge. He quickly found a branch strong enough to walk on, and one by one, the ragged dolls made their way across. Lucy was last. She was nervous about falling in the mud. Come on, Lucy, urged Dotty. You'll be all right. Just then, they heard a deep rumbling noise. S -s 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 Something's c -c -c coming, said hi fi Pa, exclaimed Dotty. Not only do people spoil the countryside with their rubbish, they also poison the air. Help, called Lucy, stuck in the mud. While the smoke and dust cleared, the others managed to pull her out. I'm not sure homemade jam is worth all this trouble, she moaned. Sadsack was inclined to agree. We can't give up now, said Dotty, while the others helped Lucy to get her leg back on. How much further are these apples, Woody? Oh, just across the road, he replied. About a mile or two, not far. I beg your pardon, spluttered Princess. A mile or two? It may not be far for you, you can fly, but it's not easy for us down here on the ground. Quite right, agreed Dotty. We've come far enough as it is, and we must get back before dark. Woody looked thoughtful again. Oh, he said. Would crab apples do? Crab apples, thought Sadsack, imagining apples walking sideways and snapping their claws. Dotty was suspicious. How far away are they? she demanded. I'll show you. And off he flew, back the way they'd come. <sighs> Here we go again. The wood pigeon led them through the thickest parts of the wood. It was really hard going. Stinging nettles stung. Dead branches tripped them, brambles snatched at them, but at last the raggy dolls found themselves standing beneath a crab apple tree, gazing at hundreds of fallen crab apples. <sighs> well, 
They're certainly easier to pick, said Lucy, exhausted. <laughs> Even if they were harder to find, reminded back to front. Sad Sack was disappointed. The crab apples had no nippers or legs. Why are they called crab apples? No, I haven't a clue, said Woody. Never mind, said Dotty. Let's gather as many as we can. It's getting late. The Raggy Dolls gave Woody a cup of blackberries as a reward for his help and filled the cardboard box up to the top with crab apples. Come on, chaps, said Dotty wearily. We've still got lots to do. The Raggy Dolls were worn out by the time they got back to the factory. The crab apples had made the cardboard box even heavier to carry. They had all taken turns. I suppose we'd better wash the fruit tonight, said Dotty at last. May we, agreed Claude. And also, we should cook it, n'est-ce pas? Otherwise, it will go bad. Lucy nodded. We've worked so hard to get it. We can't let it spoil. And so, all evening, the raggy dolls cut and peeled crab apples, rinsed and strained blackberries, boiled everything up in a large saucepan, added sugar, washed jam jars, until at last they had 12 pots of blackberry and crab apple jam. That night, Sadsack dreamed of a wooden pigeon that flew all around a world made of old cans and waste paper and a giant crab apple with huge nippers that picked up lorries and cars and dropped them into a big jar labelled Traffic Jam. The next morning, the Raggy Dolls all woke up late. It was Sunday and they could hear church bells. In no time at all, they washed and ran down to the canteen. The jam was cool and ready to eat. Outside, the autumn sun shone down from a clear blue sky and as they sat munching toast and their very own blackberry and crabapple jam, they all agreed it was the finest jam they had ever tasted. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace Look around and you will find people of every kind the raggy dog, raggy dog, dolls like you and me. Raggy dog, raggy dog, made him perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand up.